Hey guys, so in today's video, we are going to be doing my gender reveal set. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is going in with my primer. I have a whole video already posted that is dedicated to my nail prep. So if you're interested in seeing how I prep with my hand or my e-file, make sure you check out that video. And then the next thing that I do is I go in with my clear C and D acrylic and I just do a thin clear layer on all of the nails that I am not going to be doing the nude color on. So that's what I'm doing. This brush that I'm using is actually a brush I got off on Amazon and it was marketed as a acrylic nail art brush. And so I thought that I could use it with the acrylic powder but obviously that didn't work out so we switched over to my C and D brush which I like it. It's, it's nice. It's not perfect. So just as a disclaimer, this is actually the first video that I did filming me putting a set on myself and this was actually kind of a mess. The video did not turn out how I would have liked it to turn out. I'm out of focus in a lot of the points, I'm out of the frame in a lot of points. And so I actually have ordered all new filming equipment so that we won't have to deal with that in further videos because it's just not cute, it's not attractive. But I hope you guys understand. And also this is not a tutorial because obviously if you're watching this, there's a lot of things that I'm doing that a professional nail tech would not do. I am in school, so I am learning and I try to challenge myself on the sets that I do on myself. And so this was just one of those challenges, but you know, I figure it out and as I continue to practice, I'll get better. So I just wanted to share this with all of my other beginner nail techs, you know, because people can make it seem like it's so perfect and it's so easy to do you know these nails and these difficult designs and things and it's not always the case you know we struggle there's definitely trial and error periods we do things wrong so I just wanted to share kind of the rough part of our nail tech journey so with my clients what I like to do is go in with the three ball method but on myself that's a little bit harder to do because a lot of times I miss areas around my cuticle and my sidewalls because I'm working so fast and trying to apply that acrylic in a way that's kind of uncomfortable you know it's not very natural to do it on yourself and so I struggle a lot sometimes making sure that I'm covering my entire nail so I kind of treat it more as a puzzle and I just take a million and three beads and cover up the little areas that I miss and go back in to make sure that I'm building the apex right in the right area and everything so if you are struggling with just sticking to the one or two or three ball method on yourself don't focus on really how many balls you're doing and focus more on just making sure you're getting the structure and all the acrylic placed properly If you guys are interested in any of the products that you are seeing being used in this video, make sure you guys check down in the description bar below where I will have everything linked. So when I filmed this, I was about 19 weeks pregnant. It was a few days before we had our little gender reveal photo shoot, which actually turned out super cute. But we were guessing that it was going to be a boy because I have had the complete opposite pregnancy that I had when I was pregnant with my daughter. I haven't had any of the symptoms that I had with her, like the morning sickness, the acne, um, the extreme exhaustion, all of that has been gone. And I've heard that if you have like a smoother pregnancy, that it's a boy. So that's what we were thinking. But I want to know what you guys are thinking I'm going to have. So what you can do is comment down below, let me know what you think I'm going to be having. And then don't forget to check out my Instagram where I'll be revealing um, what we're having and I'll be showing you guys the photo shoot pictures that we took. So. Um, if you guys are interested, make sure that you guys check the description bar so you can get onto my Instagram. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my Mia Secret Shell Powder, which I got off of Amazon, and we're going to be doing a glitter tip with it, which is basically where you cut off the tip at an angle and you fill it in with glitter. So one of the things that I definitely need to work on when I'm doing nails on myself and on others is making 
making sure that I'm not getting the monomer all over the skin. As you can see, when I'm patting out that acrylic and trying to make it smooth and like fill in the cuticle and everything, I'm getting a monomer all over my skin, which is a terrible thing to do. Don't do it because you can actually become sensitive to the nail products that you're using, which is probably really going to happen to me because I'm terrible at doing that for some reason. I'm going in with my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut at the angle that I want the tip to be and then I draw extra acrylic off and then I go in with my file just to make sure that that angle is as sharp as can be. And so you want to make sure that you're doing this when the acrylic is not all the way dried. I did actually have some issues with letting it dry too much and then it was a little bit harder to scrape that acrylic off and then when I'm scraping off that acrylic I'm making sure that I'm using the not the sharp edge of the exacto knife I use the other side I know it also looks like really chunky when I'm applying this acrylic and when I'm going in and cutting it and it is but luckily we have files so I was able to go in and file it down to make sure that that new powder was as smooth as can be and not lumpy and bumpy. But when I'm doing nails on myself, that's one of the things that I struggle the most with is application and making sure that I'm not getting those bumps. But don't worry, don't stress about it too much. I just went in with a hand file because I don't actually be using the e-file on my own hands because I still struggle with using my non-dominant hand. But I just go in with a hand file and just smooth everything out and it works perfectly as you guys will see. So this video is about 18 minutes long after I've gone in and cut everything down and edited pieces out and fast forwarded the, all the clips. But in reality, this set took me about six hours to do and a few snack breaks. And, you know, I just wanted to remind all of my other beginner techs, like, do not stress about how long your sets are taking you. Yes, it's good to remind yourself that you do need to be striving to be faster with every set that you do. But if you're not doing your sets in an hour, it's completely understandable. And just don't let, like, don't beat yourself up over that stuff. Don't beat yourself up. Don't, you know, try and be too perfect or overcritical about yourself and your nails. You know, like, we are going to get this. We're going to be like those Instagram nail techs, you know. It just takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. And, you know, I'm sure most people starting out, it takes forever to do your nails, especially doing them on yourself. So just stay positive and just know, like, you know, you are allowed this time, you know, to have learning curves and, and be figuring things out, and that's exactly what you're doing. So just stay positive and keep going. So this video is about 18 minutes long after I went in and edited all my clips and fast forwarded everything and cut everything out that I didn't want to be in here. But in reality, this set took me about six hours to do and a few snack breaks. So I just wanted to remind all of my beginners that you should not be stressing over how long it's taking you to do your sets. You know, it is good to strive to be faster with every set that you do, but also remember that it takes time and it takes practice to get to where you want to be, which we will all get there eventually. So just stay positive, keep going, and do not be overcritical with the work that you're doing, you know. So this is what the nails look like after I've gone in with my hand file and I've smoothed everything out. It looks so much better than where we were at the beginning. Now we're going to be going in with these glitters that I got off of Amazon. The bigger jars all came in one separate kit and then that little pink came in a different kit. And we're just going in with that nail art brush that I had in the beginning and my CND clear powder and we're just going to be covering up that glitter tip.
when doing this you don't need to take that much of the clear acrylic that you guys are using just a little tiny dot and then I dip it into the glitter instead of pre-mixing it because I didn't know quite how much I needed and so this works if you were trying to save your acrylic powder or your glitter you don't have to use too much of either and then I just place that little bead onto the nail and I pat it into the area and just make sure that the glitter is giving you the coverage that you want so I want it pretty much the whole tip to be filled with glitter and so I just go in with more and more tiny little balls and just fill that in as much as possible and because this is loose glitter and you know glitter gets everywhere I was getting it onto the nude powder but I made sure that the nude was completely dry before I started this process and any of that glitter that fell onto the nude as long as it, as it has no acrylic um, attached to it you can just take a nail brush and just brush it off and you won't have to deal with any of that but you want to make sure that the nude color has none of the glitter on it or else when you go in to encapsulate it with the clear that will show through the clear So here is what my nails look like after I finish the glitter and at first I was very worried I was like oh my gosh this set is gonna be so ugly I hate it I'm not gonna like it but remember that you guys need to focus on the end result and the result through the process because after I put in that glitter everything just really started to come together and it really started to look pretty good in my opinion and so don't be again too critical of yourselves it's going to turn out how you want it to. Just be patient. And now, as you guys can see, I'm capsulating this with the clear. So one of the things that you want to make sure you do is that you switch out your monomer because there will be glitter probably in the bottom of your monomer, which as you can see in mine, there still is. But I think that's from the brush because I do want to switching out my monomer. And then you also want to make sure that you guys are not going in too thick with this but you also want to make sure that you are covering that glitter because when you go in with your file after this process then that glitter can be chipped away at which you don't want let me just express my frustration for this particular nail I accidentally went in with a clear coat which I did not want to do at first and then I tried to cover it with the nude and then I went in with the glitter and then I went in with another clear so this nail was so thick and it was on my opposite hand which I had a terrible time trying to file I think I spent probably an hour just trying to file down this nail which did not work at all so like I said just really <laughs> keep in mind how thick you're going with your products because I struggled with this nail
So here are my nails after I have finished all of the acrylic application and now we are going to go in with my gel polishes. So for my base coat, this is the Lavender Violets base coat which I got off of Amazon in a gel polish kit which will be linked down below which I would actually really recommend these for any beginners because you get a bunch of different colors even though they're not full size bottles you do get a bunch of different colors for relatively cheap and they're pretty good quality they're not perfect but they're pretty good and they really just help you to get through the learning curve of gel at least for me personally so I go in and I wipe the sides of the nails with my finger and then I go in and I cure for 120 seconds and then I'm going in with my white polish this is the lavender violets white and I'm just going to go ahead and polish my finger. I find that white and black are the hardest gel colors to polish personally because for some reason they seem to pull no matter what. It's like you have to get the perfect amount or else you will run into problems. And then this color is also from the Lavender Violets um, kit and it's just a pink color. They don't have names so I'm sorry I can't tell you the name but I can tell you the kit that I got it from. So now for this blue color, this is out of one of the Model 1's gel polish kits and it's called Dreamy Summer. I really love their kits. I would definitely recommend them. I even love them more than the Lavender Violets. Um, they are really good. And you also want to make sure that you're capping your ends. I don't know if I mentioned that before. And so now I'm going in and I'm going to cure for 120 seconds. And you want to make sure, I didn't show that in the video, but I actually cure my thumbs separately because I find that a lot of times the thumbs don't get cured properly if you put them in with the whole hand. And so now I'm just going to go in and do a second coat of all of those colors just to make sure that I get the opaqueness that I want. I'm going to be doing a Sharpie watercolor nail and so I'm taking these are the pin gear markers from Walmart they're like two dollars for a pack of like 20 of them and so I'm taking them and what you're gonna do is basically you do little squiggly lines in a pattern that you would want and then you take a nail art brush and you take some acetone and you just go and dab that over the colors and it will disperse the color away from those lines and kind of into like a watercolor moment which is what you want but I actually had some trial and error and I accidentally forgot to film it so I'm sorry but I found that if you use darker colors the color will be much more vibrant than if you do not because when you go in with the acetone and you go in with the top coat it just tends to wash it out and so I found that the colors kind of blended in with my, my white too much, which I really didn't like. And so I actually went in with some darker colors, a darker blue and a darker pink that were from Sharpie. And that helped so much more. That's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys follow me on my social media as well as stay tuned for my next video. I post Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.